Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On. Now, Hubsan have always been a big and well-respected name in the drone industry, producing budget quadcopters down as low as $20, up to their flagship model costing almost a thousand. With the drone industry moving forward so quickly, customers want more functionality for less money, and Hubsan are trying to help that through the introduction of the 507A. This could be classed as a budget quadcopter at only £100, but don't let the price of this quadcopter deceive you because it has a GPS, which means it can follow you, it can return to home, it can even fly waypoint missions. The only downside is it has brushed motors, but we'll see how it performs in the flight test, which will be in part two. So here's our first unboxing from TomTop, and thank you very much for sending this to us for review. TomTop are up there in the ranks of Banggood, Gearbest, etc. And um, this arrived with us very quickly, and I noticed it actually also came from a UK warehouse, which is reassuring whenever you order anything online. There is the Hubsan H507A. So it's packaged nicely. We've got some nice highlights on the box here and a brief look at some of the features this has. So incredibly, remember this is a $99 quadcopter. It's about hundred pounds in the UK, yet it has GPS. So that means we've got follow me waypoints and of course a live stream to the app via Wi-Fi. And on the back of the box, we've got some more detail here, demonstrating that it has a follow me function. It's 2.4 gig Wi-Fi controlled, 720p HD camera, GPS module, Wi-Fi, automatic return to home as well, altitude hold, which is great, and a flight time of around 10 minutes. And finally, waypoint missions. Now that'll be very interesting to test. In theory, we'll be able to send this into different locations uh, under a planned mission. So we'll test all of that out later. Also worth noting that it's available on Android in the Google Play Store and there's also an app for iPhone users as well. So let's get this unboxed and see what's inside. And first impressions are wow, they're big props fitted to a very small frame. The um, body here is a plastic, but it feels very robust. It's not your average kind of cheap, tacky plastic. There's kind of a weird textured feel on here, but it does feel like it could take quite an impact and survive. We've got gigantic props on here and they are gearbox driven and actually just looking at the side here you can see a downward facing motor which is no doubt connected to a gearbox on the underside which then drives the prop. Now a key point about these motors of course is that they are brushed not brushless hence the budget price of this drone. Now brush motors do have a shorter lifetime than brushless motors they're also not as powerful so at some point in the future you may have to replace one of these motors but they look quite accessible and not out of reach for the for most users to be able to do that themselves. But the reality is you're still going to get hundreds of hours of flight time out of a brushed motor so considering the price of this drone it isn't a major issue. So nice big props and a very light frame. We're going to weigh it a little bit later to see just how heavy this quadcopter is, but it feels incredibly lightweight. Looking at the front here, we've got a camera, which is a 720p HD camera. And the only downside I would say immediately is that it's not tiltable. It is fixed at an angle. And just looking at it, it looks like there's about a 15 degree tilt downwards. So to get that to cover you, you're going to have to fly it quite a way away from yourself and obviously note the altitude that you're flying at to make sure that you are in shot. Looking around the back and we've got what looks to be the battery bay here. So I think if we pull that clip down, we can slide the battery out and there it is. Uh, quite a long battery. It's about the same size actually as the Dobby battery and it's a, let's see, a two cell, 7.6 volt, uh, 550 milliamps. So Quite a small battery actually, but hence why this thing is so lightweight. I do wonder if Hubsan could actually produce a larger capacity battery for this frame at some point that may stick out a little bit further. It might upset the balance point a little bit, but I'm sure that this quadcopter could cater for that. Also on the underside here is a small power button, uh, which we will test out when we fire this up. And on the arms, we've got some protection here, probably to cover the gearbox elements. Uh, I'd also imagine that there are some LEDs within these legs. So interested to see what it looks like when we turn it all on. And in the very center here, there's a little port for an SD card. Now that's quite exposed. If you do land in water, there's no protection for that circuitry or for the card itself. 
So overall, I would say the build quality of this feels really, really nice. It feels very robust. The props are massive considering the size of the frame. Also worth noting that the props are held on via a single screw in the middle. So let's have a quick look at what else we have in the box. First of all, we've got a set of prop guards. Now, uh, mixed feelings about prop guards. If you're a beginner to drones and quadcopters, they're absolutely worth fitting uh, when you're taking your first flights because even though these are quite low power quadcopters, you can still cause a lot of injury to yourself and other people. So fit the prop guards, especially if you're flying indoors. And if you are a beginner, fit them when you're flying outside as well. Nice that it includes those though, especially considering the price of this package. Okay, we have a mixed assortment of goodies in this little box. That's everything. So we've got a set of four spare props. That's great because these props look quite proprietary actually for this Hubsan model. We've got a small screwdriver, which is no doubt for changing the props. And then we've got a little charging assembly specific to that battery. Um, that's powered by USB and we'll have a look at the charging time when we get that battery on charge shortly. We've then got some additional screws here. They'll be for fitting the prop guards, I assume. And finally, an instruction manual, which we haven't opened yet. Let's have a quick check. Okay, quite a few. So we've got propeller instructions. We've got a massive disclaimer warning document, which is actually bigger than the manual itself. And then we've got a very short quick start guide. But the reality is that most of this stuff is gonna be inside the app. So I doubt that much of this is gonna be particularly relevant. Now the current trend of course is for everything to be foldable for compact and portability. Um, the arms on this are fixed, they do not fold. But in terms of size, you can see it's just bigger than my hand. The props make it look far bigger than it actually is. If we actually pull in the scales here to see what it weighs. So we've got an overall weight of 160 grams. So that's good news for those that live in America. It's under the FAA weight limit for drones that need to be registered. Just as another indication of size, I've got my Wingsland S6 here, which when sat next to it, you can see actually there's not a lot in it in reality when the arms are unfolded on the S6, but fold the arms in on the S6 and you then see the difference in portability between these two drones. So that's the contents of the box. Now bear in mind this quadcopter is $100 or £100. 720p camera, loads of accessories including even prop guards. So I would say overall it looks to be a good package. Let's see what the app looks like. We'll fire that up next. Firstly we need to charge the H507. Connect the USB charger into a USB power supply and plug in the battery. It takes quite some time to charge, almost an hour for only 10 minutes flight time. When finished, insert the battery into the drone and hold the power button which eventually lights up the LEDs underneath the arms. With the quadcopter powered up, the LEDs will start to rotate in a pattern to show that the Wi-Fi signal is ready to connect. So at the time of filming this review, for some reason, the actual Hubsan X app had disappeared from the Play Store. So if I search for X Hubsan, I don't find it, but it should be there officially. And I wonder if they've just pulled it temporarily for an update. In the meantime, I actually managed to find it via a third party site. These are not normally recommended and this isn't my real mobile phone, so I don't care if it gets hacked. So I've downloaded the APK from this website. It's the latest version, which is 131, and I'm gonna install it now. There we go, it's now installed, and what I'm gonna do is click open. And that fires up the app. So we've got an intro screen here, which we can skip automatically. And then we've got a bit of a disclaimer, which is nice to see that the manufacturers are trying to educate users that drone use, they have to be responsible and competent pilots. We're gonna accept that and we're gonna select the model. This app does support more than one model of the Hubsan. You can see them listed there. We've got the H507A, which we will select, and there's a lovely picture of it. Now, before we press enter, we need to first of all connect to the drone, and we do that via Wi-Fi. The drone itself has its own inbuilt Wi-Fi router, which you connect to just as you would any other access point. So you can see we've got listed there the Hubsan H507A. Press that once. The password which is defaulted is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Press connect. And within a few seconds, we should be connected to it. So we can now switch back to our app and press enter. The app now changes to landscape mode, as you can see, and we've got three options, camera, album, and map. 
we're gonna go straight into the camera and have a look at what we've got. So first of all, we've got a basic manual which tells us about where we should and shouldn't fly our drone. Brilliant to see manufacturers are getting responsible. We've got a guide to the app here as well, but we're gonna have a look at the app ourselves, so we'll skip past that. We've got details about the joystick modes, mode one and mode two. We're gonna skip past that and mark our learning as completed. Thank you, Hubsan, for educating us. So we're now in the app, and the first thing it wants us to do is a calibration. So it's good as well that they're forcing us to do these things before we fly. Um, it also educates the end users on exactly what they're for. So it's telling me to rotate the drone around to calibrate the compass horizontally initially, and now it's asking us to do it vertically with the camera facing down. So I'll do that as well. This is very similar to the routine that you see on the Phantom aircraft, the Mavic, etc. There we go. So that's now calibration completed. What it's now asking us to do is to bound the aircraft to the current device. Now, after you've done this, you won't actually be able to connect to this drone with any other mobile phone unless you reset it, hard reset it. So just be conscious of that. So I'm going to press OK. I'm happy for this mobile device to be bound to it. Next, the aircraft wants to calibrate its GPS information. And what it's trying to do here is determine the accuracy of the onboard GPS signal compared to the GPS signal of the mobile device. So it's telling us to put the devices together about half a meter uh, away from each other and then press next. So unfortunately that has failed because at the moment we've only got five satellites acquired by the device, but we will test that outdoors with the proper flight test. And of course then we'll be able to acquire more satellites. So a tour of the app. Top left, we've got the home button, which takes you back uh, to your original home screen. Below that, we've got a map, which if we click, we can now see and browse quite easily. The controls top right also let us jump straight to a specific spot. So you can see I can jump to the location of the aircraft using the button on the right. Using the one on the left, I can jump to where we are. But because we haven't got proper satellite acquisition indoors, these are not going to work. We've then got different modes, so I can switch between the standard mode, the terrain mode, and another hybrid mode as well. So that's quite useful when you're flying. So we'll switch back to the live view. And then on the left-hand side below the map, we've got our mode selection. F is for standard flight. We've then got waypoint mode, follow mode, of course, which is follow me, and orbit mode, which is kind of like a point of interest mode where it will circle around an object. Within each of those, you've got specific settings as well. We'll have a look at those when we do the flight test because we don't have GPS signal indoors. Next, we've got the button to turn on and off the actual controls. So with this on, we've got the buttons which appear anywhere when we touch the screen. And this is really good because you don't need to keep looking down at the screen to see if your fingers are in the right position. So we can just place our fingers anywhere on the screen and the controls appear. That's really, really good. By pressing that button, we can toggle those controls off. And now we've got the ability to, for example, scroll around the map and zoom in and out. When the transmitter controls are enabled, you can't do that. Below there, we've got auto landing and then below that auto takeoff. Now, of course, they won't activate unless you are in the air or on the ground, respectively. Looking at the data across the top, we've got altitude, distance and speed, which are all very self-explanatory. Below that, we've got some details on what the aircraft is actually doing now as well. So if I actually tilt the aircraft and move it around a little bit, you can see those details update to let us know what the aircraft is doing position-wise, whether it's rolling, pitching or yawing. In the middle, we've got the GPS indication or the status, which you'll recognize very similar to DJI apps. To the right of that, we've got the signal of the video strength, the signal strength of the Wi-Fi link between the device and the aircraft, and then how many satellites we've got acquired at the moment, which currently is five, which isn't bad seen as we're indoors. To the right of that, we have the battery status, which is currently 64% because I've had this sat on for quite a while now. And then to the right of that, a settings cog. And just below, we've got the coordinates from the GPS of the aircraft and also of the smart device. Very quick look in settings. Now, there are lots of options in here, which is great that this is very configurable. Under controller, we've got even more settings, including sensitivity, which will be quite useful. We've then got some settings for the map as well. So uh, we can make the map center on where the aircraft is at the moment, which is also a good idea. We've got relay settings, but we don't have this. This is to extend the Wi-Fi range. And then under others, we've got information about the aircraft. So the app version, the firmware version, and other details as well. So lots of configurable options in there to customize this aircraft as you require. 
And then finally on the right hand side at the bottom, we've got the options for taking a photo and we get a sound effect or we've got video. So if we press that once, you can hear it starts recording and you then get the time that you've been recording just above that. Now, what I do notice is that there are no video settings here, so we can't toggle between different resolutions or frame rates or photo sizes. It just seems to be fixed at 720p. Not necessarily a bad thing, but just a shame that there's not a bit of flexibility there. So overall, a nicely presented app. It's very familiar if you're used to DJI or unique products. It doesn't look like your average budget drone app. So quite impressed by that. And of course, we'll see how successfully this works during the actual outdoor flight test. So we're gonna see how this performs. Part two is gonna be the flight test. Please be sure to comment below, give the video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and of course, check the video for links to the products featured. Thanks very much for watching.